Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My dearest sisters, I'm Sabah Altaf. Welcome back to our um, weekly, everyday session of uh, tafsir and uh, the four great surahs that we've done thematic study. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, with great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are today at uh, our last day. Um, and what a beautiful journey it was, what a beneficial journey it was for me, and I hope that it was for you as well. Uh, today we will carry on with uh, the tafsir of um, Surah Saf with Sister Nasri. Uh, but before that, I should let you know that we will. I will also give you a very short introduction of uh, UK Islamic Mission Sister Section, our work, our struggle, our um, um, how how the whole thing um, works, um, and we will do a dua as well. And we would love to hear from you as well, Sister. We have spent a whole month together, so please come forward and let us know what what your feelings are throughout the month with with these lessons. Was were, were they beneficial to you or not? Um, so that we are better and we excel ourselves for for next uh, next time, inshallah. And for that, uh, we will request you to give us fifteen more minutes, so we will finish at twelve fifteen, inshallah. So, uh, assalamu alaikum, Nasreen. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me, Sabah? Yes, yes, we, I can hear you. So, alhamdulillah, uh, looking forward to, uh, for today's session, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu hal adullukum hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim tu'amuna billahi wa rasulihi وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا النهار ومساقين طيبة ومساقين طيبة في جنات أدن ذلك الفوز العظيم وأخرى تهبونه وأخرى تهبونها نسر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم كما قال عيسى بن مريم للهواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله وأمان الطائفة من بني إسرائيل من بني إسرائيل وكفر الطائفة فأيدنا الذين آمنوا فأيدنا الذين آمنوا على أدويهم فأسبه 
Zohirin, Sadakallahu Nazim. Believers, shall I direct you to a commerce that will deliver you from a grievous chastisement. Have faith in Allah and his messenger and strive in the way of Allah with your possessions and your lives. That is better for you if you knew. He will forgive you your sins and will admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow. He will lodge you in excellent mansions in the gardens of eternity. That is the supreme triumph. He will also grant you the other favor that you desire. Help from Allah and a victory that will come soon. Give glad tidings of this to the believers. Believers become Allah's helpers. As Jesus, son of Mary, said to the disciples, Who oh, is my helper in calling people to Allah? The disciples had responded by saying, We are Allah's helpers. Then a section of the children of Israel believed and a section rejected the call. Thereafter, we aided the believers against their enemies and they prevailed. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inshallah, my dear sisters, today we will be covering the fourth uh, part of Surah Tussaf. And uh, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it uh, easy for us to uh, go through it and uh, a very powerful surah so my dear sisters uh, on the screen you will be seeing some very popular figures uh, which i have put on my wall of fame yeah it's not that uh, i'm a fan of all of these but uh, if uh, any one of you recognize uh, the different figures please if you could use your chat box and try to Name these figures. There is a, there are figures of popular and very famous people coming up uh, on the screen. Yes, Bill Gates, Nelson Mandela, Malcolm X, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mandela, yes. Who's the woman? Yes, Steve Jobs. <coughs> yes, sisters, you're right. I, I'm just still waiting for somebody to name the woman. We've got all the men right. Yes, Mandela. Who's the woman? We've got Bill Gates, we've got Nelson Mandela, we've got Steve Jobs, we've got Malcolm X. I'm just waiting for somebody to give the name to the woman. <laughs> okay, and I think I'll spill it out because we don't have uh, enough time. Is she the first woman who at the back of the, yes, she is, she is. Do you know her name? She is the first woman who refused to sit at the back of the bus in America. No, she's Rosa Parker. Yes, so Rosa Parks, yes. Uh, <clears throat> these are the people whom I chose to put on the wall of fame. So my dear sisters, my question to all of you is, what is that one uh, thing in common that made them to reach this wall of fame? What is the one major common thing, theme or thing that they all have to, to reach here, to reach the wall of fame? whether it is Bill Gates, whether it is Nelson Mandela, whether it is Rosa Parks, or Steve Jobs, or Malcolm X. Defined, okay, what else? <coughs> what is that one thing in common for all of them to reach here? It's not easy to reach the wall of fame, yes? Yeah? So what did they have in common between them to reach this wall of fame? Purpose in life, okay, it can be. What else? What did they? What do people need to do to reach to a certain position in life? Resistance, uh, yes, resistance can be. What is that one thing that each of them they need to do so that they can make themselves up here? Okay, what I have uh, chosen. We, uh, all your answers are right as well. If you've got a purpose in life, you know 
uh, yes, consistency, hard works, patience, serving humanity, or raise, raise voice for others. Yes, the one thing that uh, um, uh, was common for all of them was to struggle. Yeah, they all struggled. It was not uh, uh, a overnight thing. They struggled in their lives, and this is where they reached. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, strive. Yeah. And uh, I tried to find the meaning of uh, what striving is and uh, because the ayahs that we, are, we, we will be doing today uh, in Surah Al-Saf is mostly about striving in the way of Allah. Yeah, um, The word uh, over there is jihad. I was trying to find out from the Cambridge Dictionary and all the different dictionaries as to what the meaning of strive is uh, and some of the uh, def definitions or some of the meanings that uh, I could find out was make great efforts to achieve or obtain something struggle or fight vigorously. This is not just a simple struggle. Yeah, It is a difficult struggle. It has to be uh, where uh, we try very hard to do something or to make something happen, especially for a long time or against difficulties. Yeah, That is what uh, striving. Striving is uh, not uh, things that you can do easily done things. Yeah, Striving is where you need to put your efforts. You need to be there. You need to fight. You need to struggle. Yeah? And against odds, and against difficulties. So, having <laughs> said that, today uh, the ayahs are strive in Allah's path, and uh, the uh, the main gist of ayah number ten to fourteen is the only way of success for the believers is to strive for the truth. Yeah, people we we have seen on the wall of fame that uh, uh, successful people they had different uh, intentions, they had uh, different. Uh, motives they had different goals and for whatever they strived and they reached over there but uh, in these ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing us that uh, the only way for success for the believers is to strive for the truth yeah that is the only success and inshallah we will uh, look as to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 10 he says believers Shall I direct you to a commerce? Yeah. As soon as the word commerce or trade or business. So what I was trying to do is go the easy way and ask uh, Google uh, what uh, a successful business means. First, let us let us look at what a business is. Uh, the primary purpose of a business is to maximize profits for its owners or stakeholders while maintaining corporate social responsibility. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the main concept we have behind any business is to multiply. Yeah, whatever you invest, whatever is your input, you want to get uh, manifold time. Yeah? And uh, according to that, when I was looking at uh, uh, Google, I was looking, uh, I just typed in what are successful uh, business owners. Yeah? and uh, how to make your business successful. So these were some of the things that were being prompted in my Dropbox. The three things that make business, full, business successful or 10 keys to success in business, how to run a successful business, or what is the important thing for a company to be successful, how to manage a business successfully. There were many promptings from Google. Uh, and uh, as we also know that uh, there is a huge module in universities where students are doing business studies to just be there up uh, on the business ladder. Yeah, and uh, but there's no promise. There's no promise. Yes, there is lots of uh, uh, hopes or there are there is lots of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, call like, you know, uh, encouragement for people to go in business. As well, uh, as we know, Islamically as well, it is preferred it is encouraged to follow a business route rather than a professional route, yeah, because there is Allah's barakah in there. And uh, what Google was also saying was, I, I was also interested in knowing how do people actually make money? Yeah, what are those uh, uh, industries or those outlets where people are making fast money these days? Yeah, um, again, um, we are not going into the tangent. What is right? What is wrong? We are just uh, sort of browsing about what. Uh, uh, Google had to say about successful businesses. And uh, I found out that these days the highest money making or quick money making is the podcasters or the bloggers because of the number of followers and how they are able to change people's mindsets. 
And uh, then there is all, uh, also Etsy and eBay, wedding photographer, video pro producer, creator, free, freelance writers, content creators, personal chefs, freelance designer, yeah? Well, because we are living in a very customized world where people want everything. We, we are slowly seeing this trend, even among Muslims, that even on Eid days, uh, we want to give customized uh, gifts to our own kids as well. So we are, we are entering sort of uh, that area of business. So this was some uh, information that uh, I found out on uh, Google. So having said that, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, directing us towards a commerce. And the commerce that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us towards is that will deliver you from a grievous chastisement. Yeah, the ayah number 10. Allah says, shall I direct you to a business yeah, or a trade that will free you from a grievous chastisement? Uh, uh, my dear sisters, uh, the concept of uh, Jahannam or uh, the concept of Jannah are uh, oft repeated themes in the Quran. Uh, why? Because they serve us uh, as a reminder for the for believers or also for mankind that uh, the nature of this world is very temporary. This world has got a destination. This world is going to end. And a person will be taken to task for their actions during their lifetime in this earth. Yeah? In this temporary earth or temporary world, whatever we do, we all have got uh, ending, whether we acknowledge that ending or we do not acknowledge that ending. We have only two destinations. We will either end up in heaven or hell. And uh, the mention of uh, these places like the Jan Jannah or the Jahannam in the Quran, it can serve as a motivation for people. Yeah? Mm. Even uh, uh, we are on the high level of Iman or low level of Iman, as soon as the ayahs of Jannah come, or as soon as the ayahs of Jahannam come, there is suddenly that uh, urge in our hearts to avoid Jahannam and to make a place in Jannah. Yeah? And on irrespective of uh, on what level of Iman we are. Yeah? And uh, over here, especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this business, which uh, if we uh, were to uh, have that business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we were to conduct it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is saying that this business is specially going to um, help us keep away from the bad destination. Now, when it comes to Jahannam, um, as we all know that uh, Jahannam has various levels, in some of which the torment and horror is greater than the others. Yeah? So the people of uh, Jahannam or hell will be given different levels of punishment. According to a hadith narrated by Muslim and Ahmed, uh, the Prophet wasallam, he said concerning the people of hell, there are some whom the fire will take up to their ankles, others up to their knees, others up to their waist, and others up to their collarbones. Yeah, to, so for so different uh, level of uh, atrocities or the disobedience that people have done in dunya. So there will be people standing at different stations in uh, Jahannam and they will be having different sorts of punishment. The person who will have the least punishment among the people of hell on the day of resurrection will be a man under the ark of whose feet, yeah, under below his feet, they will be placed a smoldering ember, that is a burnt coal, and his brain will boil because of it. This is the least punishment, and the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, pointed or directed this punishment towards his uncle, um, Abu Talib, uh, because he had not accepted Islam, but he had assisted and supported the Prophet ﷺ in his mission. Yeah, And then there are uh, many other, uh, we know that the hypocrites, they will be uh, in the pit of uh, Jahannam. Uh, different, uh, uh, we, we also know that the Quran talks about uh, the Pharaohs or the Pharaoh, yeah, what sort of punishment they will face in uh, Jahannam. So uh, every uh, person will have a different standing. There are some of the punishments of uh, Jahannam is like uh, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the roasting of the skin in Jahannam or uh, when the skin is roasted and it loses or the property of pain, then Allah will give rise to a new skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also talked about uh, the punishment of uh, melting um, the inner organs when people will be given hot water, hot boiling water to drink to quench their thirst, then the organs inside the body will be melting. Uh, the Quran also says the day that their faces will be turned upside down in the fire, they will say, woe to us, would that we had obeyed Allah and obeyed the messenger. So very uh, scary punishments coming and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is uh, uh, giving us that guarantee yeah, that uh, if we engage in this trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then inshallah, we will be free from this grievous, grievous chastisement. Allahumma ajirni min nar O Allah, protect us from the hellfire. My dear sisters, in order to really absorb or digest these sort of ayahs, it is very important that we understand the temporary nature of this dunya. Yeah? And uh, when people will be summoned before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be asked as to how long did they live in the dunya. Maybe they lived for more than 100 years, but when they are presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like each of them, they will say, oh, we just stayed an hour or maybe a little bit more or a part of the afternoon. Yeah, this is what uh, we all will be saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, this, these ayahs, the ayah number 10 is inshallah inviting us yeah, that uh, uh, if we want to save ourselves from this punishment, then we need to engage in what is the trade? Let's see yeah, what trade is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling us towards a very uh, successful uh, business plan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that it will save from painful punishment. Um, <coughs> now, in the previous section of this surah, uh, when we started Surah Tussab, it was stated that it is very wrong of the believers to pledge, yeah, to pledge or to make an uh, agreement with Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to listen and to obey. Yeah, Remember the surah started with sincerity. Allah wanted us to listen to him, to obey and to do what we say. And uh, this uh, lis listening or the sama or the itat is with the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying over here in this ayah, have faith in Allah and his messenger and strive in the way of Allah with your possessions and your lives that is better for you if you only know. Yeah, so now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling over here is when the time comes that we need to honor this covenant, that we are we believe in Allah and his messenger, then the love of life, yeah, we need to strive against the love of life and the love of wealth, yeah, because these are the two important things that are going to stop us from believing in Allah and his messenger. Yeah? So <coughs> we, we need to understand what belief means. Yeah? Belief, again, it is a very abstract term, terminology. But there are things in our life we do believe. Yeah? But when it comes to the belief in Allah or in the belief of his messenger, uh, because again, these are the things of ghaib, yeah? which we have not seen, we have not experienced in our lives. Uh, I wouldn't say experienced, yeah, but we have not seen yeah, to understand the certainty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to understand the certainty of uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that is the test for us. Yeah? For, the, for the believer, the test is about believing in the unseen. And uh, uh, then one part of it is to believe. And the second part is that the belief should be so high that we are ready to strive, we are ready to struggle, to be on that wall of fame near Allah. Yeah? And to be on that wall of fame, we need to strive with our wealth and with our lives. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we do those things, then the support of Allah and uh, the victory will come as well. Mm, so um, Muslims uh, should be ready to uh, give their lives, their wealth for the cause of Allah. And in return, we will get uh, loads of benefits in this uh, sort of business plan. Uh, 
<coughs> sorry uh, in a hadith uh, mentioned uh, in a hadith from abdullah bin salam that the companions wanted to ask the prophet of allah about the best actions they were the, the companions they always were eager uh, we have to understand that there was very little questioning done by the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were not like the companions of musa alaihi salam yeah but whenever uh, they had any question they would come to the prophet and they asked uh, the prophet what is the best action which allah likes yeah and uh, uh, at that time this ayah was sent that oh who you who believe shall i guide you to a trade that will save you from a torment from a painful torment yeah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered that the best act that allah likes is that we believe in allah and his messenger and that we strive hard and fight in the cause of allah with our wealth and our lives now over here the word that we need to pay attention to is allah is saying strive yeah do jihad uh, jihad uh, is a word which is uh, very toxic in uh, our current time yeah and there are many even muslim countries who are thinking of taking the concept of jihad out in some other countries it is being pressurized to uh, omit this uh, chapter from the quran which uh, encourages people to do jihad so inshallah let us understand what truly jihad means jihad means a struggle and at different levels so uh, <coughs> before we go to that slide uh, we are going to look at uh, the concept of uh, uh uh the jannah yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when we will do jihad uh with our lives and with our wealth then in return what is allah giving us he will forgive you your sins and will admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow he will lodge you in excellent mansions in the gardens of eternity and that is the supreme triumph yeah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, over here he's saying that uh, in the uh, it is the principle of the quran whenever uh, jahannam is mentioned soon enough even jannah is also mentioned and um, the, the phrase uh, uh, gardens beneath which rivers flow is very common scene uh, which is depicted uh, in the quran and uh, there is description of lush green uh, uh, grounds and uh, rivers flowing and you know all these uh, elements uh, which sort of raise hope in us yeah so to reach to this jannah and to reach uh, to jannah the station before reaching to jannah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it is forgiveness yeah allah is saying he will forgive you your sins unless and until our sins are not forgiven we will not be able to reach jannah and to reach jannah it is just the pleasure of allah it is allah's will allah will put in jannah whom allah wants it is not our deeds yeah that doesn't again mean that we stop doing good deeds yeah and especially over here we it is mentioned the jihad yeah the highest deed that allah is requiring from all of us but the one point that i want to make it clear that even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was questioned will your deeds make you enter jannah and he said no it is only the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now when are we going to uh, be uh, eligible for that mercy only when we put our efforts in our lives only then we can uh, reach to the mercy of uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be able to earn the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, once we are uh, uh, in that uh, sort of a category where allah is pleased with us then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment maybe you know he will just he won't wouldn't even look at our books and he will give us direct entry to jannah and that is uh, the the station that we all are striving to achieve that uh, we do not have that uh, power or that ability to do each and every we look at the intentions yeah our, our intentions are so polluted our intentions are so mixed up or messed up so it it gets uh, Uh, a very uh, scary sight as to are we even going to make it to jannah but uh, over here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to reach jannah we need to get our sins forgiven and for that we need to reach a station where we are able to earn the pleasure of allah 
Yeah. So again, uh, very tricky, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes it very easy for those people who will be, um, uh, inshallah, uh, striving with their position in your lives. Yeah. So the next slide, we are going to look at a plan which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is proposing. Yeah. When we looked in the beginning, when Google was giving us different plans. So now there is a plan over here, and I want each of us uh, to reflect as to what plan, what part of the plan can we fit into, yeah? So what is the business plan of jihad, yeah? Uh, this word, which is very toxic, so what we have tried to do is, <coughs> sorry, uh, we have tried to break it down, yeah? Jihad is different, in different way we are doing jihad, yeah? So the first uh, uh, type of striving, and uh, in this surah as well, in Surah Tusaf, it is talking about the military jihad. Yeah, it is also talking about the financial jihad as well. But um, at the as Surah Saf was being revealed at the time before uh, the Battle of Uhud, where uh, the some of the Muslims, yeah, they were believers, but they were keeping themselves away from entering. So the type of striving. If it is a military striving, then what would be the activities? It would involve fighting. It would involve battles and wars. But uh, in this business plan of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, in uh, it is a it, it is a very different plan, yeah. And uh, it is not like the battles and the wars that we are currently facing, where there is. Um, um, in in the superpowers or in the countries who want to do uh, be part of this fighting, they have got uh, their own agendas. Yeah, they uh, want to either to expand their lands or to hold wealth. Yeah, to reach other countries' natural resources. That could be um, what uh, their motive is. But uh, when Islam talks about the fighting, it is against tyranny. It is against zulam. Yeah, it is against oppression. Now, who will authorize this? Yeah, who is supposed to do this? That is very important. It has to be an Islamic state. It has to be official, and it has to be authorized by the Muslim state. Not anybody and everybody can stand up and they can say that. Oh, we want to. We are going to take part in the military jihad. Yeah, and this is what uh, everywhere. Uh, we see that uh, the, the propaganda or uh, the weapon that is used against the Muslims is about this type of uh, for striving in the way of Allah. Yeah? So we need to be very clear as to what the activity is and for whom it is against and who is it done by. Then uh, the second type of striving, which the surah also talks about, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that strive in the way of Allah with your positions and your lives. Yeah? In military jihad, we are giving our lives. But uh, in the financial one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we need to give our possessions. Now, what are the activities? It is charities, it is donations, it is helping uh, the communities and the societies financially. So whom is it against? This jihad we are doing not to wipe out the poverty or wipe out or uh, make the economic uh, or the GDPR of the country grow. No, the fight is against our own selves. It is against each and everyone's greed, the greed that is sitting in our hearts. Remember the surah, surah al-saf, uh, it was targeting most of the time our the condition of our hearts. Yeah. So <clears throat> when we are engaged in financial jihad, that means we are fighting against our own greed. And who is supposed to participate in it? Everyone. Whoever calls themselves a Muslim, they are all part and parcel of this jihad, of this striving. Then the third one, uh, what I have pointed out over here, is the educational jihad. Yeah. Uh, uh, Islam came with education. Islam began with Iqra. Yeah? So in, when it is the educational jihad, uh, the activities is seeking and teaching knowledge. Yeah? Uh, the hadith of uh, Hazrat Usman, the best among you are who uh, learn the Quran and then teach it. Yeah? Learn the Quran, again, learn the divine way of life. Learn, uh, educate ourselves about what sort of a way of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about and what way of life he wants us to implement. So for that, we need to seek uh, and we need to teach knowledge as well. 
Now, what is this against? What uh, what are we striving against? This is to remove ignorance. Yeah, in uh, uh, many of the scholars, they have termed the periods or as periods of ignorance. And even in today's world, where there is a huge influx of knowledge, yeah, knowledge is everywhere. But according to the Quran, this will be. Uh, ignorance knowledge because ignorance is when you've got the knowledge but that knowledge is not helping to understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, who is your creator, what is your purpose of life. When uh, the knowledge is not reaching those goals, then there is ignorance everywhere. So when we are in, in indulging in a jihad of educational jihad, then we have to, we are fighting against ignorance to wipe out ignorance and for that we need to do dawah. Yeah? And again, it is uh, done by everyone. Yeah? Each and every believer, they have to do. Uh, remember, my dear sisters, as we are going through this business plan, this is the business plan which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proposing for all of us so that we are able to uh, save ourselves from Jahannam and make and uh, secure a place in Jannah. Mm, the fourth type of striving is the spiritual striving. Yeah. Again, when it is spirituality, then what are the activities? It is worshipping Allah, it is our salah, zakah, hajj, our uh, tasbihat, our duas, yeah? whatever we are doing. Now, whom are we doing uh, the spiritual jihad against? Against shaitan, our own nafs, our own laziness. So, uh, And again, it will be done by everyone. So we need to really reflect that. Even in the month of Ramadan, we have been very busy in um, trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the different uh, uh, activities that we have been uh, doing. We have uh, cut down on our sleeves, we have cut down on our food, and uh, we are praying. We are spending most of our time in uh, doing our worship. But if that has not stopped us from our laziness, from controlling our nafs, or opening the outlet to shaitan, then we have to really ponder about it. Yeah, That's because this is the jihad that we are doing. And again, everyone, each and everyone, young, old, healthy, sick, yeah, women, women, children, all of us need to do this jihad. And um, political jihad, uh, this is something uh, about uh, the, uh, the, the striving in which we need to speak the truth and establish justice. That is the activities. And whom is it against? It is again uh, against uh, evil and oppressive rulers. And uh, uh, the uh, this type of jihad is done by qualified scholars and uh, experts. Yeah, experts in the subject. But uh, unfortunately, what happens with the political jihad? It is happening in everybody's drawing room. And each of us, whether we are knowledgeable on the subject or not, we are, the entire ummah, yeah, top to bottom, they are very busy discussing the politics. But they are, and that is why we are seeing that we, it ends up with frustration and it ends up with uh, no results because this type of jihad, the political jihad, is supposed to be done by qualified scholars, yeah, people who know what they are saying, and by experts in the field. We need to produce those. Muslims who will be doing all these things. Yeah? And uh, the, the last jihad that I mentioned over here is the moral jihad, yeah? the type of striving that we do with uh, morals. Yeah? And the activities is leading moral lifestyle and avoiding immoral lifestyle. Yeah? And we see that uh, again in today's uh, time, uh, the entire world, yeah? it is going through this moral uh, downslide. Yeah, there, there, there is. Uh, if somebody is doing good, um, it is not appreciated. But morally, if people are doing wrong things, it is. Uh, they become icons and they are uh, promoting. They've got a big followership. We need to do jihad against the moral uh, downgrading in the society, and for that. We need to fight against one's desires, yeah. Because this, uh, when we let lose our desires, we want to do anything and everything, irrespective of whether it is harmful or beneficial. So <coughs> this is again done by uh, each and every one of us. So this is the business plan, my dear sisters. 
that um, is proposed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to strive in these different aspects of life. And this chart clearly shows us to what activities we need to be involved in and what should we be fighting against and whom who is involved in it. And uh, so uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us easy, make it easy for us to uh, understand. Yeah? And uh, in the same uh, ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had also mentioned that uh, he will also grant you the other favor. Yeah, When we uh, involve ourselves in this sort of a jihad, inshallah, Allah will give us the long lasting eternal jannah over here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, gardens of Eden as well, yeah? and, uh, where, uh, of eternity, as well as Allah is saying that Whatever you desire in the dunya, at that time the Muslims were at a very uh, low side and uh, it was just jang e uh, which was going to happen very early, very uh, premature days of Islam. And at that time Allah is giving them a glad tiding and within years they saw that they uh, got the victory in the conquest of Mecca. Yes, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah is not just giving us promise about an eternal life in the year after, but um, he is also uh, telling us about uh, the, the things that Allah will grant in the dunya. Yeah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he will also grant you the other favor that you desire, help from Allah and a victory that will come soon. So give glad tidings to the believers. Yeah? So Allah is saying that in this dunya as well and it will be in the um, year after as well. Now, immediately after that, this is, this is a huge task, yeah, a huge task before Muslims when we saw the business plan. So for that, Allah needs help us. Allah, for Allah, the principle is kun for yakun. It is not hard for him. Yeah, If he wants to give victory to the Muslims, it is very easy for him. He can just say kun for yakun and things will happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, for this cause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recruited people from the beginning of timeline. And in that case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he says that uh, <coughs> he had recruited, uh, the recruitment, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out about uh, the time of Isa alayhi salam. When Isa alayhi salam, uh, he had called to his people, who are my helpers in the cause of Allah? And the Hawari, the Hawari are the people who are the very, uh, you know, the, the word Hawari that comes uh, into Arabic. It is not an Arabic word, but it came from uh, the people of the book. It means a person who is zealous and an ardent supporter. It is evident from both the Quran and the Torah that when Isa alayhi salam, he lost hope in the scholars and the jurists of the Jews, yeah, the people who claimed uh, their ownership on the religion when Isa alayhi salam, he lost hope on them, he presented his message before the poor and the masses uh, of the fisher folk. Yeah? And uh, uh, in, uh, in the Bible, in Matthew, it comes like um, Isa alayhi salam, he was telling to the people, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Yeah, That is how to recruit people. And uh, a very small amount, maybe 300 and odd individuals uh, who were the Hawaris with great zeal, yeah, they embarked uh, and they helped Isa alayhi salam. So they were the helpers, they were the Ansar of Isa alayhi salam. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the beginning, you know, when uh, the, the grounds of Mecca were getting very tightened for him, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had asked, this is a hadith of Ahmad, uh, in which he asked that who will support me in conveying the message of my Lord. The Quraysh, Allah presented the message before the Quraysh, but the, the Quraysh have prevented me from conveying the message. And at that time, the Muhajir and the Ansar, they stood up. And they helped the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is no more. Yeah? But the responsibility falls on our shoulders. The business plan is there as well. Yeah? So the recruiting of the Ansars is still happening. It's not lost. Yeah? So we need to question ourselves. Are we available to be the recruiter, uh, to get ourselves recruited as Ansars? in the way of Allah. Yeah? So uh, this is a reflect, reflective question, my dear sisters, for 
all of us. Yeah. So in uh, this slide, I've tried to uh, put everything together as to um, what the business plan is, uh, what the successful business looks like, what the plan is, what we need to strive for, what is our destination, and the recruitment is also open. So we need to understand as to uh, am I ready to be a part of it? And if I am ready to be a part of it, then there is a struggle, a life of struggle, a life of striving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising that when we strive in this uh, dunya, we will reap um, the, the benefits in this dunya and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 14, uh, at the end that uh, when the believers, uh, when the Ansars, they said they are responding, then a section of the children of Israel believed and a section rejected the call thereafter. We aided the believers against their enemies and they prevailed. So in um, in these ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that uh, when uh, the Jews, they went away from the message. Yeah, they were led astray, but uh, the Hawari or the uh, followers of Isa alayhi salam, they were the ones who were the committed individuals, who came, uh, who became an element uh, for uh, the eternal supremacy of the truth. Yeah? So uh, it is up to us as to the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which path do we want to choose, the path of the Jews or uh, the path of um, the followers of Isa alayhi salam. So I've uh, done my best to deliver as a, uh, human possibility to deliver uh, Surah to um, but again I do understand that they were I couldn't uh, do justice to the Surah and uh, there are many things maybe I have not delivered it uh, the right way if I have done it that way may Allah erase it from your minds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and all of us uh, who have been part of this learning to take the best outcomes, learning outcomes for ourselves. And uh, with that, uh, I come to the UKIM Sisters Dawa Fund Appeal for uh, today. And that is uh, uh, the different work where, in which the UKIM Sisters are involved. Uh, all the work, it requires wealth, it requires money. And we have just seen uh, in Surah Tussaf as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, encourages us, us to strive with our wealth and with our belongings that the best part of our belonging um, has a right of the beautiful work that is going on and especially for the Dawa Fund for the UKM sisters and uh, inshallah Sister Saba will be talking more about it and uh, I will leave it to Sister Saba over here. Uh, Jazakumullah Khairan from uh, my side. Uh, wa dawana and alhamdulillahi <laughs> alhamdulillah what a strong message in such a beautiful way you have presented and may allah make us among those that uh, we serve his uh, religion and uh, we become uh, um, a strong wall and work together. Uh, and for that, um, let me introduce you to UK Islamic Mission. Um, you've uh, those who are not, uh, you know, do, do, don't know, and you might be a newcomer to these webinar classes. Um, it's only fair to let you know that we keep saying uh, UK Islamic Mission, and this sister is from UK, UK Islamic Mission. UK, UK Islamic Mission is a charity organization working here within UK. Um, and uh, it's been um, it's, it was established in 1962, and it's been working um, throughout. Uh, we have not stopped for even for a day, um, and um, it, it's its sister section was uh, made in 2002, I suppose, and we the sisters have been working. Uh, really, um, uh, you know, tirelessly with all the problems going on in our houses, in our life. I won't say problems, but I would say, um, you know, lots of happenings going on. Uh, and a woman thinks that, oh, she, she cannot do it. But 
uh, UK Islamic Mission sister section prove that no, uh, we can juggle everything uh, if we have the will to do so. So UK Islamic Mission, um, uh, the mission of um, um, the, the organization is to equip and empower our communities with the teachings of Quran and Sunnah and make them uh, conscious of their duties of spreading the good and condemning the evil. Um, so this is empowering our own communities here in the uh, United Kingdom, the Muslim communities. Then we have a pathway to success. Uh, and uh, to do the first and foremost is to invest in our own workforce by giving them the correct training and skills and showing them the right vision, teaching how to protect as a team, keeping good communication with them. So this is all done in a, in a, in a very um, structural way, alhamdulillah. Then we, uh, this year's theme, uh, what is our theme for this year? Uh, Sister Nasreen, if we can go to theme. Oh, yeah, the next one, I think. Oh, no, we have the departments as well. Yeah, hi, hello. Yeah. Um, so the theme for the next uh, two years is um, uh, the, the Quranic verse, uh, hayya, uh, sorry, the, the Adhan, hayya al al falah, hasten to success. Um, and to achieve that, uh, we reinforce in ourselves our submission to our Lord, to strengthen our sisterhood, to invite active and skilled sisters to join us in serving our deen and communities. So this is our theme and we work, when we create a theme, we work uh, alongside, we work through it. And so these are the three things that we will keep in mind the next two, um, uh, two years while we will be working. Then we have um, uh, how the system works. We have divided the United Kingdom into four zones. So we have South Zone, uh, we have a North Zone, we have Midlands, and we have Scotland. So it's all like uh, geographically, uh, we have divided it. And um, then we have um, what the, our current workforce is. Um, alhamdulillah, within the sister section, we have um, uh, 310 sympathizers. So sympathizers are the sisters who regularly attend our halqas, goes to, to, to you know attend our mosque. They attend uh, all the events. So they are um, quite uh, close to us, and uh, they are always there. Um, and we can we can say that they are our um, future, probably future investment, especially with young ladies. And uh, then we have associate 265 associates, and and they work with us. The associate sisters are always there working with us, arranging uh, halkas as well, and specifically arranging um, events. Uh, then we have members, we have 121 members, and these members can be on a leading positions, um, you know, uh, leading different departments. So we'll, we'll go to departments as well. I hope I'm not that quick for you all to, to take it all, but I'm just looking at the time as well. These are the most important things uh, within, uh, within the work working structure is our different departments and these departments are uh, you know carrying on uh, the different work uh, we have a tarbiya uh, or training department we have a dawa or community cohesion department then we have a international relief department and we also have um, a national which is uh, within U uh, uk uh, relief department, which is called Eye Care. Uh, we'll go through that uh, briefly. We have a new Muslim care project. We have a kids, uh, um, you know, we call it Kids Corner. It's very, very popular among kids. We have youth depart uh, departments and youth are active in arranging different events for us and uh, studying alongside their religion. Um, and social media in today's age uh, day, it's extremely important to have um, an active social media department as well. And um, then we have national webinars. Um, let's see if we can go. 
Um, you know, a lot of our training, uh, education, communication with our communities nationally is done by online webinars. We have not stopped for a day during lockdowns, not for a day during lockdown. We were carrying on with our duties on webinar. It's very, very active. Um, as you can see that we have spent a whole month together here through, through um, online sessions. We, our Dava department is a very active, and as I said, even the Dava department did not stop for lockdowns. So this was very challenging for us because Dava is on field work. But alhamdulillah, they created so many things. We created grand competition um, to make people healthy, you know, step challenge. Um, they done uh, neighbor keeping an eye on neighbors. Um, different training sessions and in the past before um, pandemic we were giving um, uh, gifts to services the key key services like uh, fire fire services ambulance services um, uh, emergency department in hospitals um, so we were giving them gifts of thank you during uh, ramadan and eid um, our international relief of course, our international relief section is very busy seeing the torment and chaos the world is going through. How can it not be busy? But our within UK relief department, as I said before, uh, I get you would be surprised. For some people, it's quite shocking that yes, UK also have poverty and UK also have homelessness and UK also have uh, mental health issues as well. Uh, people not having jobs. So um, this this department is ever active with their food hubs and uh, a, a lot of uh, projects that they are doing. Um, you know, uh, Macmillan coffee mornings, and then win winter when winter comes, even cleaning the streets and uh, survival kits for uh, uh, homeless. Then refugees, we have a lot of refugees pouring in as well. So, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, uh, the eye care department is ever busy as well. Um, then there is uh, new Muslim care. Uh, new Muslim care is caring everything and anything for for the new revert person. However, with the sisters department, we are more, uh, you know, uh, emotionally and uh, spiritually nurturing them, um, funding them as well. We have taken them to Umrah twice. We've taken them to Umrah. We do events with them. We do parties like Eid parties, summer picnic with their children, family. So this is a very popular, it's going very popular with uh, um, Muslims, new, uh, sorry, new Muslims, and even with born Muslims, they also want to be part of it as well, alhamdulillah. Last but not least is our invitation to you, uh, sisters, to join us in serving our Lord by establishing Amar bin Ma'roof, which is enjoining the good. In, in our Muslim communities, a, a strong Muslim community is strong me and you. How can we help others throughout the world when we ourselves are not strong? So this is an open and a very clear invitation without any code words that please join us. We are ever welcoming and looking for any skill you have anything you know um, and working together has got so much blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that even if you're walking uh, or doing a journey with three people make one as your leader and and communicate and follow so working together as a team has got a special blessing and a hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on it so yes please sisters if if you think that you want to work for the uh, for your own community here and uh, your theme, uh, religion, please join us. So alhamdulillah, this is a short introduction. Jazakumullah khair Nasreen for your, uh, 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 you know, helping me. Um, we also would like to listen uh, and hear from you, sisters. So uh, before I do dua, I would really would want you to, to just uh, open your mic and tell us about the the time that you have spent, uh, the time together that we have spent, how you felt, 
um, was was it beneficial for you as it was beneficial for me? Um, and, uh, um, you know, your feedback make us better for next time, inshallah. So it's very important for you to give your feedback, even if you feel that there was something missing. So sisters, please do come forward. Uh, Sister Huma, if you can see if there's any hands raised, uh, you can unmute them. Uh, I can see one hand. Just let me get to the name. Uh, sisters, sisters, you can unmute yourself. Sister Sehru Nisa Kashif. Yes, sister, go on, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the other sessions, but um, I managed to catch the last 20 minutes of this one and um, I found it so beneficial. I wish I had uh, been able to listen to all of the sessions and um, I've gotten a kind of a gist of what um, uh, the organization uh, uh, like it is about and what it does and I really really like it and I definitely want to be a part of it. A beautiful uh, voice and uh, what a cheerful way you have put in even if you've heard only 20 minutes. Well I've got good news for you sister everything is recorded so you know how we quickly get out of uh, Ramadan mode so to keep yourself back into Ramadan vibes Please do listen to all the sessions while you're working in the house, while you're probably ironing or uh, uh, cooking. That's what I do. I, I re-listen to all the lectures to you know, keep my mind, uh, my mind uh, focused. Uh, so inshallah, we will, be, uh, we will be, if you're part of any WhatsApp group, uh, if not, then please write in, uh, uh, in the chat room and let Homa know your uh, telephone number so that we can uh, arrange for you to carry on listening and carry on being with us, uh, inshallah, in future. Jazakumullah so, khair so much. Um, is there anybody else who want to give their feedback? Uh, of the lessons we've done, uh, the thematic, you know, how do you feel uh, this this year we had the theme of thematic studies? Uh, how how did you was it was it uh, beneficial for you? Did you learn anything from it? I can see one more hand raised, Sister Parveen, uh, you can unmute yourself. And Sababaji, there is also one. Um, response on the chat box. OK, yeah, Sister Parveen, can you hear us? Uh, you can unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum wa salam. I just want to say thank you so much for all the sisters who made this um, session possible for us. Sister, if you can speak slightly loudly, we can't hear you. If you can speak uh, closer to the mic. Can you hear me now? A little bit, yes. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the sisters who made this uh, uh, program possible for us. Alhamdulillah, I've uh, not missed a single session since we started the beginning of Ramadan, and it's been very beneficial, and uh, especially you know, it's like for the English speakers, and uh, although it's just been an hour, and Alhamdulillah, I think it's, it's, it's more than couple of hours when you can understand every word and all the sessions were beautifully illustrated with the slides and was beautiful put you know um, the speech was very very clear very well spoken very well you know uh, explained and we certainly uh, you know, enjoyed all the sessions and uh, may Allah reward you for all your hard work and uh, we look forward to many of these uh, more sessions to come and uh, I hope you know, we continue to have this kind of session uh, throughout the year and uh, we really, really enjoyed it. I just want to thank everyone for all your efforts, for your hard work and making it possible for, for us during the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I really, really enjoyed it. It was very, very beneficial. And Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. Sister. Alhamdulillah, sisters. This is really nice to 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 know that you you enjoyed it. I hope it was beneficial as well. Um, inshallah. 
Um, and uh, we we're just going to take two weeks off for for uh, Eid holidays and spend time with our family. Then we will be back uh, on duty. And uh, I must tell you, sisters, that our revert um, um, we we've got weekly um, um, Islamic studies and Quran tafsir sessions online, same same platform on Teams for specifically designed for our new Muslims and revert. But I must tell you, it is ever so popular with born Muslims as well. There are a lot of sisters who who've mentioned to me that the way you explain is so easy, especially with English speaking sisters as well. So do let each other know. And inshallah, we will be doing um, a, a, a very good program for for the summer inshallah there's a beautiful uh, so message a few more hands uh, yes I've go got, ahead uh, sister akila uh, can you um, as uh, unmute yourself yes sister sorry sisters we won't be able um, i can see one more hand sister sehru nisa kashif i think so she spoke before um yes. uh, yeah sister akila go on please Assalamualaikum. I just wanted to thank you all the four teachers who taught us and uh, just to let you know that you've been a real boost to our Iman during Ramadan. I've been following your lessons for a couple of years now, the Ramadan sessions as well as the book clubs and uh, Arabic, uh, Quranic Arabic lessons and Alhamdulillah, I've uh, gained a lot from your lessons and so thank you. Jazakallah khair, that's lovely to hear. Jazakallah khair, sister. Uh, Sabahji, I'll read the message of Noor Bibi. Um, sister has said excellent session, mashallah, by Sister Saba, Dr. Batul, and Sister Nasreen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all immensely. Very well explained in detail and engaging. Definitely encouraged us to ponder and reflect. Alhamdulillah. Very beneficial, mashallah. Each session was delivered confidently, mashallah. Could feel a warm rapport amongst us all. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I can again see Sister Sehru Nisa's hand. Sister, do you want to say something or do you want to add something in the chat box, please? Uh, I would like to, if I can just have one, I mean, uh, maybe not even a minute of your time. Yes, I would. On. Sorry? I, I mean, yes, Sister, go on, please. Yeah. I would just like to recite a small uh, part of an ashid, if that's uh, okay. Um. We normally don't do that. Uh, how how quick is your small nachit? Because we're very, very short of time. Yes, sisters, because I, even I have to run to the school, oh. nursery run. Yeah. Uh, okay, I see. I'll be really quick. Okay, thank okay, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحابه وسلم اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair for your time. What a beautiful voice, uh, uh, Sister uh, um, Sehrun Nisa. What a beautiful voice and confidence as well. We definitely definitely would want to work alongside with you inshallah in future uh, noor i would like to just say one thing um uh, you guys have been so good noor bibi and the, and the rest of the sisters a lot of sisters you guys have been on the spot answering throughout and you miss sister azra shaheen she did the first session uh, introduction as well uh, so really really looking forward to be with you guys again uh, after eid whichever program uh, happening around inshallah any any other hand if 
there is one more hand. I can see if... Sister Akila's hand again. I'm not sure whether I've uh, I'm not lowered it. Sister Akila, can you be quick, please, if you want to say something? No, it, she's lowered okay. the hand. Okay. The... That, so that's she... fine then. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, uh, sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill uh, in us all that we have um, we have uh, mm -hmm. learned throughout the, the the month all the reminders that the sisters in their in their sessions have given through the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah make it easy for us in this most difficult time that the whole world is going and may Allah make our children live in a more peaceful way. This 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 dua is coming right from my heart, but I do have the the dua um, here for you. So we're going to start a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Allahumma lakal hamdu anta nurus samawati wal ard wa man feehin. Wa lakal hamdu anta rabbus samawati wal ard wa man feehin. Anta al haq wa wa'duk al haq Oh Allah, all praises are for you. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between. You are the Lord of the heaven and the earth and whatever is in between them. You are the truth. Your promise is truth. Your words are truth. Your paradise is truth. And indeed, the fire of hell is truth. Allahumma ihdina saratul mustaqim. Allahumma ihdina saratul mustaqim. O Allah, make us walk on and give us guidance on the straight path. Rabbana faqfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. O our Lord, forgive us our sins and remove from us our misdeeds and cause us to die with the righteous. Ameen. Allahumma inna ka'afuan kareemun tuhibbul afba fa'afu anna. O Allah, certainly you are the most forgiving. You love to forgive. So please, please forgive us. O Allah, <coughs> you are the most forgiving and you love to forgive. So forgive us, inshallah. Rabbana atina fit dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar. O our Lord, grant us good in this world and the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the fire. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmat innaka antal wahhab. O our Lord, let not our heart deviate after you have guided us and grant us from 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 your mercy grant us from your mercy indeed uh, uh, um, uh, uh, righteous children the, the the leaders of the believers indeed you are the bestower of of uh, of rahma ya muqallibul qulub um Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmata innaka antal wahhab. O our Lord, let not our heart deviate after you have guided us and grant us from your mercy. Indeed, you are the bestower. Ya muqallibul qulub, sabbat qalbi ala dinik. O my Lord, make my heart and make all my sister's heart firm on your deen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna anta sami'ul alim. O my Lord, O our Lord, whatever the efforts the sisters have put in to presentation and all the sisters who have made an effort to join here in this in this program and throughout uh, in UK I am there are so many programs and throughout the world in this blessed month accept our little efforts inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa la ali Ibrahim innaka innaka hamidum majid ama Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa la ali Muhammadin kama barik ta ala Ibrahim wa la ali Ibrahim innaka hamidum majid Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu